There we go. Kind of bummed I have to follow up on that band. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, today I want to start out um, with asking a question. How many of you have once in your life been curious about something? Yeah? All right. I was expecting a little bit more. Um, with that something, how have you thought about where that something comes from or how that something's made or how that something was discovered or what is that something? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about something that will ultimately connect all of those things, no matter what it is. Now, what is this something that I'm talking about? Well, it's what I like to call the curiosity cycle. Now, the cycle that I created, first and foremost, begins with curiosity. Curiosity then leads to the innovation of new technologies. New technologies will then lead to discoveries and then to inspiration. Inspiration will then further lead to more curiosity. Now, what are some examples of the curiosity cycle at work? Well, almost anything you can think of, whether it's the discovery of fire or discovering how the human body functions, why the weather changes four times throughout a year. And this next example is rather specific, and it's one that I will be focusing on. Why exactly the planets circle the sun in elliptical patterns? Now, to start off this curiosity cycle, I have to take you back to a time when people started to look for answers in the stars. People such as Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei. Nicholas Copernicus came up with the idea of heliocentrism. Now, heliocentrism means that all of the planets, in fact, circle the sun and not the earth, which was the common belief in his time. It was Nicholas Copernicus's curiosity that further inspired Galileo to continue his research. Now, Galileo had questions that could only be answered off of earth. So in order to explore those questions, he had to innovate a new technology. And this new technology that he innovated is known today as the telescope. With the telescope, Galileo was able to make discoveries such as the four moons orbiting Jupiter and the, the phases of Venus. With this information and these discoveries, he was able to prove that our solar system is in fact heliocentric. Now Galileo was able to take us into space with our eyes but he was not able to put an object into space. This did not happen until the mid-20th century. Galileo was able to inspire people centuries after his death, people such as Robert Goddard and Werner von Braun, the fathers of modern-day rocketry. This behind me is Robert Goddard's V-2 rocket. It was the most advanced ballistic missile design of his time, and with this, he would inspire further innovation, innovation that would only lead to further discovery, new technologies known as Sputnik 1. Now, Sputnik 1 was the very first ever man-made satellite, and it was launched on March 4, 1957. It orbited the Earth for 90 days. Now, Sputnik 1 launched into space and opened a completely new door to a whole new universe of discovery. Moving a little bit further forward, we have the birth of the astronaut. Now these are the original seven NASA astronauts. These brave and curious men were willing to risk their lives in order to make new discoveries to support humankind. So we have all of these innovation of new technologies, but what exactly have we discovered with them? How many in this room have actually heard that we are all star stuff? Anybody heard that? All right. Not all of you, so I'll explain it. <laughs> um, in order to understand this, I first have to give you a brief idea of the life of a star. Sorry. So, all stars come from humble beginnings, namely a gigantic cloud of rotating gas and dust. Gravity drives this cloud to condense and form a tightly packed sphere of material. 
This star to be then gets so hot and dense that molecules of hydrogen within its core collide and fuse together. These fusions or nuclear reactions produce energy in the form of light. Now this light shines brightly throughout the entire universe and a star is born. Now as the star ages, the outer layers begin to collapse. This hastens the pace of heavy element fusion, but at the same time reduces the energy needed to hold up the outer layers. At this point, the density of the star increases exponentially, and e electrons and protons within its core, um, they get so tightly packed together, and it's a completely new entity altogether, known as a neutron star. Now, if we go a little bit further in time, this star and its layers will then collapse onto the core at an incomprehensible speed, and it will create a monstrous blast known as a supernova. Now, with this supernova, crazy amounts of energy is produced, and we have new elements that form, elements such as carbon and oxygen. Now, these elements are not only the most prominent on Earth, but in the entire universe. This, to me, shows how we can use the curiosity cycle as a tool, a tool that will allow us to get closer to, the, to knowing what connects everyone and everything everywhere. Now, another aspect of this curiosity cycle that I like to use is the fact that people such as Galileo Galilei, an old astronomer with a telescope, was able to inspire me, just a kid on an island, inspire me to the point that I want to explore for myself and expand humanity's presence and become an astronaut. This is a pretty crazy thing. Now, it's not only this curiosity cycle, all right? You can think of anything. So that's why I'm going to leave you tonight with a task. I'm going to ask you to go home and think. I want you to think, <laughs> what makes you curious? What have you been curious about? And then I want you to see which curiosity cycle influenced you and your life. Thank you.